All right, everybody. So, let me tell y'all what I got in front of me here. And it looks like I'm doing a cooking video, but we're not. What I have is I have a propane tank. I got a fish fryer. Got a cast iron skillet. Just a regular old pot. Got some uh, some old metal cooking utensils. I got some five gallon buckets, and I got two things of wheel weights and some uh, welding gloves and a gas mask. Um, oh, and a fan. <laughs> um, you guys are. Uh, Probably wondering what I'm doing. And I'll give y'all three seconds. Just follow the video. Give y'all three seconds. Uh, post in the comments, which I think I'm doing right here. I'll wait. Okay, time's up. <laughs> what we're doing, guys, is uh, I'm going to be doing kind of a blog series on bullet casting. Um, guys, I started watching um, a couple YouTube channels about a year and a half, two years ago. And this really got me interested in the bullet cast. And those channels were mainly Fortune Cookie, uh, 45 LC, uh, Elvis Ammo, and Cutchin' Boy Prepper. Those three channels, um, those are mainly bullet casting channels. They're also reloading channels, but for the most part, they're, they're really well known for bullet casting, making uh, your own bullets out of, um, out of lead, like scrap lead. And guys, um, with the stuff that's been going on lately... Um, it's been getting harder to actually just find um, ammo, even for us reloaders. As y'all know, I'm a reloader. I've been reloading for close to, I think, about five years now. And even for us, it's getting kind of, uh, I'm not going to say expensive, but it's, it's, it is cheaper than buying it. But still, it's getting kind of harder to find uh, certain bullets, um, especially primers. It's just getting, getting a little less cost effective. And guys, I really just want a way I can go out and just plank and maybe, uh, you know, just, just have bullets to shoot, you know, and I have to spend a ton of money. And watching, especially Country Boy Prepper's channel, he was doing videos of making, of uh, casting your own bullets. He was making like 223 cast bullets for um, under, I think it was like under like 10 cents around, 9 millimeter, cheaper than 22 um, 4570 gallery loads and stuff. And he was doing all out of scrap lead. He was doing range lead, but him and uh, recently cast a uh, full lead taco. His videos have been really getting me into it. Um, so I just decided, especially once the corona hit and everybody was going crazy buying ammo, I was like, hey, I got to figure out a better way to um, provide just shooting bullets for myself. I want a way I can just have, if I just feel like going out cracking what they are. I just have a way to make my own bullets. So, um, yeah, I got a couple molds. I got a couple, uh, I got a little uh, lead pouring thing. I've, I've been trying to get a good amount of stuff. I'm not just going to show it all to y'all right now. I was thinking about doing that, but I, I thought against that later um, as I progress. I just figured we'll go through this as a blog type thing. I learn, you learn, maybe y'all give me advice. But, yeah, so... Um, I do have some experience casting lead, mainly casting fishing weights, so that's where I do have some of this stuff from. I was casting fishing weights out of wheel weights and selling them online to make a little extra money for reloading supplies. So, um, I have my sorting buckets. I have a couple. I got a box here and a bucket here of wheel weights I get from a tire shop. I got um, some utensils, my fryer, and my, uh, my fans and stuff, so I already know kind of how to set that stuff up, but, um, Again, um, this is slightly new territory for me as far as bullet casting goes. I have been researching. I've been watching lots of videos. I've been on castbullets.com. And guys, if you are interested in doing this, I highly recommend you guys check out Cast Bullets. Uh, that's Cast, C-A-S-T, Bullets, B-O-O-L-I-T-S. Apparently, when you start making bullets out of cast lead, they become bullets and not a bullet. Don't understand that, but that's apparently how it works. So, so yeah. Um, in today's little video here, I found out my new camera here works extremely well at night. It's like nine o'clock right now. It's, the sun's been set for about three hours, and um, I'm already not out, so I figure we're gonna do this at night. But anyway, um, I figure we can just make some ingots real quick. So uh, all we're doing, uh, as far as making ingots is we're taking this lead, sorting it. These are all wheel weights. We're sorting these out. And then we're going to separate them uh, by uh, your clip on or stick on. And then we're going to use our fryer here to melt them down. And once we melt them down, they become molten. 
I have a, uh, where is it actually? I got a muffin pan that I burnt out, burnt all the non-stick stuff off of it. And uh, we're going to pour it, that molten lead, after we clean it out, flux it out. We're going to pour it in those ingot molds, and that's just going to make it easier uh, for us to like melt it down. It's going to give us kind of a uh, general deal. So, um, with all that being said, let me set all this up real quick. We're going to set it up the way I, I do when I'm melting my uh, fishing lead up. And, uh, yeah, I'll turn it on, and, uh, I'm probably going to turn this on for some heat, because it's like 46 degrees out here, kind of a little, a little nippy. <laughs> for us southern guys, it's kind of cold. So, I'm probably going to turn it on for some heat, and we're going to sit out here and sort some lead real quick, make some ingots. So, um, give me about, give me about three minutes, and i have all this sorted out. Uh, so I got my uh, got my fish fryer going here. I moved the light over a little bit. Hopefully you can see a little better. Uh, put my gloves on real quick. So what we're about to do here is we're about to sort these wheel weights out. Now we're going to sort them out by two ways. We're going to sort them out one by um, attachment type, and I'll explain that in a second, and two by material. And they kind of go hand in hand. So again, this is a uh, box of my, what I'm going to be using as wheel weights for my lead. And you have two main types of wheel weights here, okay? You have, this one's stuck on here. You got these, uh, you got these long strip ones that are e extremely easy to bend, right? These are called stick-on wheel weights, mainly because when they're put on the tires, they're, uh, they have an adhesive backing, and that's kind of how they're put on. Uh, at least from my understanding. And then you have clip-on wheel weights, right? These are a much harder lead alloy, okay? Um, and they have these little clips that go on there to attach to the tires. Now, we need, we don't need to separate them, but we it's better to separate them. And I'll tell you why. Well, one, we need to go through each of these and make sure they're actual lead because um, as times progress, lead has, uh, for environmental reasons, this and that, um, companies have stopped using, they're moving away from using, uh, actual lead weight, lead for, uh, these wheel weights. They, um, some of them are zinc, some of them are steel, and, uh, we need to make sure it's just lead, right, or it's lead alloy. So, we gotta go through here, and we're gonna, gonna show you how to check. And the second reason is, as you see, this one's easily bent. That's because this is a soft lead. Stick on wheel weights, from my understanding, um, they're, uh, BHN, which is kind of the, um, way lead is rated on its hardness or its purity um their bhn is a much lower number than uh these stick-ons okay so say we want to make a uh cast bullet that's gonna expand really good at a very low velocity um i don't know say for like pistols or something uh you would probably want to use a softer lead so we would have a bucket of the soft lead or you just need something that needs a soft lead you have this in a bucket by itself. Or say you need a, um, like we're going to do, we're going to need something we can push at a slightly higher velocity that so it has a higher burning rate, meaning it melts while well, melting rate, meaning it's going to melt at a higher rate, which means we can push it faster. Uh, we're going to want something that's a little harder. That's maybe like a 15 BHM. That's something we're going to want the stick-on wheel weights for. So then we're going to put them in a the bucket. I got two buckets right here. And uh, one is the stick on, one's the um, other, and everything else just goes back in the box. So the way I check is, uh, you see I'm wearing gloves to make sure I'm getting the rust, uh, not rust, the uh, lead residue. All I do is, I, this is a pair of side cutters, and all I do is I take it, and I just snip that lead. See how that leaves a good mark? Only lead is going to do that. Or, like on the um, stick ons. See how that just snips through like that? Only lead does that. If we have something like a zinc or a steel one, it's going to take a lot more force. Um, Elvis Ammo also showed he did a tap test where he could take one and he would... See how that's a really dull tap? Whereas uh, here's a piece of steel right here. That's kind of a louder tap. Um, he would tap them and see. But that has led me astray. So I just like to nick them, and if I'm not 100% sure, like some of the zinc ones are actually pretty soft. I think this is a zinc one. 
I'll just leave it in the box and I might come to it at a later date because zinc will mess up um, some of your bullets. It will mess stuff up. Apparently, my, I really need to rebuild my um, my little my little lead melting pot because I managed to get some zinc in there and it's corroding um, it's corroding my pot. So um, that's really all we're doing. It seems like it takes a long time. It really doesn't. So I'm just gonna go to this box right here. See, like here's a zinc. I think this is a. See, this is a. Uh, this is your steeler zincing. See how that rings like a bell? Where here's a lead one. It's super dull. I'm gonna go through this box real quick. And again, I've done this with fishing weights a lot, and I can kind of look at a lot of detail. So I'm gonna go through here real quick and I'll probably just fast forward through all this. Our um yeah, most of our lead that we want to worry about. I'll say around 15 pounds worth of lead, real weights right there. It doesn't take a lot because lead is just so, um, well, it doesn't take a lot volume wise because lead is just so freaking dense. But yeah, we have, um, uh, what's wrong with I didn't pick that one out good enough, but yeah, we got about 15 pounds of it right now. We're going to start melting it down. So, um, as far as our melting procedure, this is the same way, um, to make our ingots. Now, making our ingots and actually making the bullets are kind of two different things. So, as far as our melting pot, you want to use uh, cast iron. I'm not really sure why cast iron exactly, but everybody I've talked to have just said make sure you use cast iron. So, we're using cast iron. It's just an old, um, my Dollar General sells cast iron skillets. It's a little, um, I think this is about a 10 inch skillet. I think I paid 10 bucks for it. So, cast iron. Got it on a uh, fish cooker. I think it was like a $30 fish cooker. Um, propane runner to it. Really nice and warm. Um, got that going. As far as safety wise, um, I want to talk about the fumes. And I want to talk about burns. So um, you need to protect your hands, first of all. Um, trying to put a butter welding glove here. Um, as far as this, you want to make sure you're not wearing... Um, like closed-toed shoes. Make sure you wear it. You wear some. It's kind of hard for um, this stuff to burn through. Steel toe is ideal. I'm wearing, probably wanting some of the wrong stuff to wear. I'm wearing these, um, what are these? These are like the Walmart combat boots. But I've done this a lot. So, um, yeah. Still, you shouldn't do that. Make sure you try to wear some. Wear some that's closed toe. It's going to be better for this. Um, you want to get a good pair of heavy gloves welding gloves work really good like um stick welding gloves these work really good they're they're meant for high heat so wear something like that don't wear like mechanics gloves or something you can but just don't do that um also opera make sure you get a pair of um something to put over your eyes because a uh, hot lead in your eyeballs is not good of course i mean a lot of this stuff is common sense um, as far as the fumes, I have a fan right here that I'm going to be pointing, uh, blowing air away from me to get most of the fumes away from me. Um, I'm also making sure I don't get over the pot because any type of sweat or anything that goes into that molten lead can cause a little explosion. There's going to be lead everywhere. I'm not even joking. Uh, don't do this in the rain. Don't do this where water can get into your pot. I've also, after talking to some people... I went to the welding shop because I was really concerned about like the lead fumes and stuff getting in my lungs. Um, I was recommended a Miller. This is a LPR 100. Um, freaking um, half mask respirator. Um, according to this, the P100 filters provide 99.97% filtration of airborne particles and oil aerosols and oil aerosols specifically. Um, Hexavalent chromium, zinc oxide, manganese, aluminum, cadmium, and lead. So, um, double protection, making sure I got some pushing air away. I'm going to be wearing this little sucker right here. Um, it's $30. It's not that uh, uncomfortable. It's actually 
pretty tiny. So uh, $30 to help protect your own lungs. So with that being said, I'm going to just start dumping this in here once the pot gets a little hotter. And uh, we're going to start melting up some lead and make some ingots. So all I'm going to do at this point, I hope y'all can hear me pretty good through the respirator here, is we're just going to start putting these clip on wheel wicks. Again, we're trying to make ingots of just one type. Of one general army, so we're putting nothing but the clip arms in here. Yeah, we're just going to put a layer of this clip on wheel weights in this here cast iron. Make sure that pops on there pretty good. I got a fan blowing in this way. It's going to take a little bit for all this to get the temperature and melt down. And I just like to go ahead and try and pile them up in here. So, I'm going to let this all just kind of melt down. I'm trying not to add any extra more. I want to put all this in right now because there might be water in any extra we add. So, that's been advice that I've been given. So, we're going to try to just put all this in here let it melt down to where it starts to get pretty uh, liquid, semi-liquid. And then we're going to use a metal sonic spoon to start uh, getting all the clip-ons and we're going to get all the top dirt out of it. So we're going to let this melt down, get uh, in a nice liquidized form, and then we go on to the next step. Okay, y'all. So, as you see, our land is basically completely molten. You pull off like that, you had that beautiful, almost like a mirror. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a slotted spoon. You actually kind of want a little bit of slots in this, but we're basically just going to try to scrape all this extra off the top and I got a pot here and I'm just going to dump all this in with the scrap metal. Basically, that slotted spoon, that's all that leg go through when all the other stuff gets caught. So, it's going to kind of get the top, make sure we shake out most of the lead, dump it out in that pot. I'm going to mix this a little more just to make sure I get all the lead I can. Now most of the impurities, since lead is so heavy from my understanding, most of the impurities are going to rise to the top anyway. So by mixing it, any type of lead we have stuck to them metal pieces, uh, in my thought process, is going to make sure it melts and everything else is going to rise up. So. I'm going to let it heat up a little more. Alright, then we're just 
just going fine. Ready for all these little extra off the top. Straight the edges. Now I got about this good mirror finish here. We can probably scrape some more off of there. I want to call that good. If you guys cast a lot and y'all are looking at this, is this good or should I clean it out some more? Mirror shine, now it's time to flux it. Now, there's a couple ways to flux from what I've seen. Yeah, sawdust, there's some people that use some special stuff they make, but candle wax has been like the most, you know, general thing I've seen people use for flux. Now, I'm not 100% sure on what fluxing is. I've asked a couple times, I've got a couple different answers, but for the most part, it's the last thing you really do before you start making your product, be your inks or your bullets. And uh, from what I've been told, it really just kind of brings any extra little uh, impurities up and lets you uh, get it up real good. It really purifies your mixture. So what I got right here is just a uh, paraffin candle. A uh, whole one I got, I kind of chunked it up some. Y'all need a whole bunch, but you need a good fix so it goes all over. So I'm going to just pour this in here and get back because this is going to catch on fire. So just going to put that in there. I say it kept it, so uh, that's more. Really, I'm just gonna let that kind of burn itself up when I move the camera back. That's pretty burnt off, so. I'm going to slide a spoon here and I'm just going to kind of take all that top off. So now our lead is good to go ahead and pour into our ingot. So I'm going to move the camera around. I'm going to uh, get my ladle. Um, I just use this here ladle to pour my ingot. So I'm just going to put it in here. Kind of let it get the temperature. Um, you're going to get a lot less just sticking to the ladle if you just let it sit in there for a little bit. So I'm going to move the camera. Once this gets the temperature, I'm going to pour our ingots. Let y'all know. Let me let y'all learn from my mistake. When I first started doing this, when I first started doing this, I thought I could be a really uh, bad butt dude and just pick that whole thing up with these welding gloves and just pour it in. Guys, this is probably around, actually I have a thermometer. This is a foundry um, thermometer. This is used in like foundries and stuff. I bought it off a guy I used for uh, my melting pot. And as you guys can see, this molten lead is right at 800 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 400 degrees Celsius. It's freaking hot! Okay? These welding gloves are not really made to do that. And just standing over it and trying to pour it, this whole thing probably weighs close to 30 pounds of just pure lead. It's not something you want to do. The easiest thing to do is get you one of these metal ladles. Need to be a metal one. And just scoop it out. Okay, and as you see, for my ingots, you can buy really the fancy ingot pants. I'm planning on doing it eventually, but right now, I have a muffin pan. That's been, uh, you would, it's better than a cast iron one, but I got one that doesn't have nonstick stuff in it. It's been burned out or whatever. But all I'm doing is getting a good scoop of it, making sure my feet are awake. And pouring. And pouring these on uh, a little, what's it called, spoon. Alright, so, don't forget.
forget, this molten lead is 800 degrees Fahrenheit. It cools down fairly quickly, but it takes a minute to set up. So let's set up completely. What do you think it's set up? Take you a piece of metal, a, a good sized nail or something, and kind of jam it. Okay, if it can still go in, it's not completely cooled, and you can pull it out, and you also have a molten puddle when you mess up an ingot. So just let it sit here. This is kind of why you want to have a couple different ones, and I'm going to end up getting some. So I'm just going to let this sit, cool down, and um, yeah. Well, it's been about 10 minutes. And there you go. Well, it's still pretty hot, though. I just give it a little warm. I don't know why I still got that fan on, guys, but here we go. Got some of our first, well, not my first, but first in this vlog series. Uh, got our first, oh, uh, these are pure clip on wheel weight ingots. Hey, Burr. And uh, yeah, weigh about, a, I'll say about a pound and a half, two pounds maybe each. It's pretty stout little suckers. And uh, so, next video, we're probably going to actually be making these into bullets or bullets, or I might just show you guys. Um, the equipment I'm going to use to do that. So, I have um, a couple different calibers. I just want to uh, know what you guys think. I should uh, cast first. I have a um, I have a 7.62 mold. Well, it's a 311 di 7.62 diameter mold. Some I can use for your 7.62 by 39, 7.62 by 54R. Or I have um, I have two different uh, 225 caliber molds that I can use for a 223 or 556 or possibly a um a uh 22 hornet so I want to know in the comments y'all hit me up in the comments tell me which caliber y'all think I should do first or which one y'all want to see me do first it doesn't really matter to me guys I'm probably gonna try and do all of them so um then, then again with all that being said um first ingots uh, probably gonna make some more um, hope you guys are enjoying the blog. Any type of uh, comments or whatever or help you guys can offer me, just leave it in the comments. I highly appreciate it. Um, if you guys like the night videos, let me know. So, uh, with all that being said, y'all take it easy. And I'm um, going to try to edit this and uh, edit this up and hopefully have a post for y'all tomorrow. So, take it easy.